So today I'm going to show you why AI search optimization is not just SEO. So you can probably see people saying calling this GEO or AEO or AI search optimization. Honestly, I don't really care about the acronyms. All I want to tell you today is that just doing traditional SEO does not guarantee performance as far as your brand being mentioned in AI generated responses. I'm going to show you a real life example here. So now I just want to add one clarification here. There is nothing wrong with ranking well in traditional search. In fact, you should do it because it greatly increases your odds of showing up as a citation, greatly increases your odds of at least getting that brand mentioned, but it's not the only thing that matters. Okay. It's one thing that matters among many other things. Okay. So what I want to show you is this is something I did just to kind of prove this concept. I added up all of just, and by, by the way, the, the ones just represent that they are present. It doesn't mean the position that they're in. Okay. This total is the amount of mentions they have across the LLM specifically. So I only added up uh, AI, AI products essentially. So from this column all the way over here. Okay. And what's interesting is you can see that Chesterfield service does well. Um, it shows up in, you know, these three search engines and also shows up well in many of the LLMs as well. Okay. So there is that one that does correlate pretty well. Okay. But it starts to get really weird past them. And I think Chesterfield service is an outlier. So if we are like to remove an outlier, it's going to start, the data is going to start to get really messy. Okay. So a couple examples of this, for example, we have, we have brands down here that are actually showing up in, in many of the traditional search engines. So like sludge busters is showing up well in Google brave Bing. uh, they, they show up in the local pack, obviously in Google, but they're practically invisible on these LLMs, like basically invisible. They don't show up at all. Okay. Um, and we can see this across the board. We have other examples where, uh, certain brands do really well in LLMs, but don't really show up in traditional that much. Okay. So there's just a lot of examples of this and there's not really any consistency to this, but there, there are some variables that I know for sure are really, really important if you want to be able to Im improve performance. Now, when you look at this, this should be very exciting. Let's say if you're an agency, because look at the gaps that exist. Okay. All of these are holes that need to be filled. And if you're working with one of these brands, it's quite simple. You just look at how they're performing across all these platforms and you try to fill in these gaps. You try to fill in these holes. Okay. And if you're working on your own brand, you look at these holes as opportunities. We got to fill in these gaps if we want to get more, you know, more brand presence, more performance. Okay. So that's the first part. Um, now let's walk through this, for example, on the citation front. Okay. This is really important. So, Based on the citations that we ran uh, or that we extracted, okay, 43% are what are considered first party citations on these platforms. So first party citation is a plumber. Okay. So an example, of this would be like Chesterfield service uh, is cited in chat GPT. This is a first party citation because this is an actual like company that's servicing this location. Okay. Meaning it's something that we could control. Like if this was our uh, our business or our client, we could control this by producing content. I'll talk about that here in a second. That's first party. Third party, on the other hand, are platforms that we do not control, but we can attempt to get our brand on, right? We can, it's a directory, it's whatever it may be. We can actually go and, and optimize on these platforms. But we don't actually own the platform. Okay. So some examples of this is based on this query uh, that I ran, which is, uh, who is the best plumber in Chesterfield, Missouri? That was the long tail phrase I used. Um, 72% of the third party citations were directories, 72% across all of the LLMs, um, all the citations, about 72%. It's pretty crazy. And then we also have 12% social media and then basically nothing else after that. Okay. And I, search here, just for his clarification, is when Google AI mode uh, cites the local pack or Google business profiles. Okay. So there was an example of that. Now, here is a very quick example. So if you're on, if you're doing local, you can see uh, the citation frequency that shows up. Now, the thing that's really important here is whatever keyword you're going after, 
run run those queries through all of these LLMs. Okay, run those queries through all the LLMs here. And what you want to do is you want to start to find what are the most common citations that are used and then prioritize those citations. Okay. And then that become, those become your targets for getting your brand featured on those, those websites, because we know that these LLMs are using those websites to feed and enhance their answers. Okay. So it just makes perfect sense. Go after the ones that are already prominent. Okay. Um, and so in this case, and I, I would assume this is probably the case for most home services type of local queries. You're going to see Yelp and Angie and Better Business Bureau and Home Guide. Like these are all pretty common ones you would expect. Okay. So this is the order that you would want to go in. Like Yelp, hands down, number one, it's cited basically on every single LLM that we ran, like every single one. Angie's huge, Better Business Bureau. So, like, if you're a plumber and you're not on most of these, you basically are greatly decreasing your odds of seeing any brand uh, appearance or visibility on these platforms. Okay. So it's simple, but not easy, but we got to go and do it. Okay. We got to go and be on all of these platforms. It's really, really important. So this part is simple. Just one profile at a time. Go to your Yelp, start thinking about, okay, how do we improve our Yelp profile? How do we start driving more reviews on Yelp? Then we go to Angie. Okay, how do we optimize this profile? How do we enhance it? How do we drive more reviews on it? You just keep doing that one after another. Okay, that's all you have to do. And then Reddit and the other ones is a little bit different strategy. But as far as the directories, it's pretty straightforward. Enhance the profile, make it more relevant, uh, and drive reviews. Pretty simple. Okay. Now, the other big part here is on the first party signals. Okay, first party signals are really important, meaning you can go and actually build out these landing pages. And these tend to do get cited uh, quite frequently. I have up to 42% um, of citations actually come from the businesses that, that operate in those locations. So you should be building out your traditional commercial pages. Okay, I actually just posted something about this on LinkedIn. And I'll just show you. Um, very simple kind of concept here. But we'll go over here, find the post. So this one here. I talked about basically, you can see here that kind of three things that we want to do. Number one, we want to create relevant and original localized commercial pages for all our services. This is nothing new. If you've been doing local SEO for any amount of time, you should be building out all of these localized service pages. Okay. That's really, really important. But aside from that, you want to build support for each of these bottom of the funnel pages. So we're starting at the bottom of the funnel and then we're working our way up. Most people on the local level do this very, very wrong. Okay. What you want to do is you want to build content that's highly, highly relevant to the service and the location. So you can see, you know, create assets to support the commercial pages. This is the type of stuff that actually works. Okay. So pricing and cost, by the way, uh, statistics are like citation bait for LLMs. LLMs love citate, love statistics, data, especially if it's first party and it's data that it's never seen before. It tends to gravitate towards that a lot. So this type of stuff here is stuff you want to just build a lot of. Okay. And so like, for example, even with the pricing cost cluster, I could build out like 50 of these based on these templates, right? How much does it cost to replace a toilet in Chesterfield, Missouri? How much does it cost to replace a broken pipe in Chesterfield, Missouri, right? And you just keep going through the different variants because they are gonna have different answers and they have different intent. So you should be attacking all of those, okay? And then the first party statistics are big. You pull internal data from the plumbing companies and then you use that as your, your unique data. And this is really, really important, okay? And this will get cited quite well. In fact, I don't wanna talk about any black cat methods here, but uh, these LLMs, they do cite wrong data quite a bit. Like they'll just, any data that it hasn't seen, it will think it's like fresh data, even if it's fake or made up. Uh, and I don't think you should do that. I think you should do real data, but I'm just saying it just shows like it really, it really gravitates towards data it's never seen before. And as you can see, pages that are cited in chat GPT and the other platforms are using standard on-page SEO practices and they're also very relevant, okay? So that's the advantage here of, of using rankability is first of all, we're gonna build proper relevance by getting the keyword in the URL, uh, title, meta description, first sentence, possibly in the H2 as well. That's like bare minimum. Then we're going to go and look at these NLP keywords 
uh, or these topics that are that come from NLP extraction. Um, and then we're going to make sure that our pages are comprehensive and deep and cover the topic to the fullest extent. Okay. So this is what we do. Every single page that we build in the local level is going to hit on all these topics. But most importantly, when you're thinking about building topic authority, this is really important, is looking at some of the other variants and seeing, should we create a dedicated page for this variant? Okay. So like, for example, your plumbing issues, that's a, that is a perfect topic for the blog, for example. So 17 common plumbing issues in Chesterfield, Missouri. Okay. Boom. We got a perfect informational asset that can support our commercial page. Right. And then we go down here, right? Water lines, uh, you know, statistics about water lines in Chesterfield, Missouri that you didn't know. Right. Um, or leak detection. I mean, we go on and on. Creve Core, we could build a dedicated page specifically for Creve Core, dedicated page specifically for St. Louis County, tankless water heaters. Okay. So you can actually use this NLP to fill in your topic gaps. Okay. And we do this all the time. It's really, really important. And then what you do is when you start to get some traction here, um, and you start to get some rankings in the top 100, you just go into Google Search Console and start to look at the keywords that are popping up in Google Search Console. And then, and then look at the keywords that are not ranking well, and then go and build out dedicated pages if they have different intent. Okay. That this is the best way to build topic authority. This is what we've been doing. Actually, uh, a real life example here for uh, rankability, go over here and you'll see, we'll go to the blog. This is what I'm doing right now in real time. Okay. So like this best, you know, AI search rank trackers, this post is doing really, really well. All I'm doing is I'm just, I'm, I publish the content. I find gaps. And then I fill those gaps. Okay. That's it. And another small example here is if we go to the actual rankability site, this is a, how you can do this with commercial pages, go over here to the AI analyzer. Notice that now there's a bunch of different pages here, right? So now we've got chat GBT rank tracker. We've got perplexity rank tracker. Um, how did I come up with these ideas? Quite simple. I just looked at Google search console and saw that people were actually searching these. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go and build dedicated pages for these because they're different. And now, of course, all of these rank really well, and I get the added benefit of more topic support, more topic authority, and we're filling in all those gaps. The more you fill in those gaps, the better you're going to perform. And most importantly, the more you're going to establish your website as an authority on that topic. Okay. This works for traditional search and it works for LLMs. That's the good news. To influence the LLMs, you can't just rank on traditional search. And I'll give you the final example to prove this. Okay. So I have ranked for the keyword St. Louis SEO consultant for three, four, five years. I don't even know how long it is at this point, how long I've been ranking this EMD. It's been a very long time. And in fact, just for fun, I built this EMD inside of Gotcha SEO Academy just to prove how effective EMDs are to rank in traditional search. Okay. Um, they're incredibly effective for traditional search. Okay, I want to make that clear, but they are not effective for LLMs. Okay. And this is one of those weird things. So we look over here so we can see absolutely killing it in, in Google basically haven't moved in years. Okay. But then we go to AI mode and what do we see here? Well, number one doesn't show up at all. Okay. We are not showing up even in the slightest. And this goes back to what I mentioned before is that AI mode is heavily driven by the Google business profiles. I do not have a Google business profile for that property. So basically zero chance of performance in the AI mode. Just, it's just not going to happen. Okay. Makes perfect sense. But then we'll look at chat GBT. Here's another example. Okay. Best St. Louis SEO consultant. We look at what pops up, not showing up at all. Okay. You do not see St. Louis SEO consultant popping up and it doesn't even actually pop up even in the citations. Okay. So once again, this is an example of very good SEO, traditional SEO does not correlate with brand mentions or even citations here. Okay. Uh, and then we go to Gemini, same exact thing here. Once again, does not show up here at all. And then perplexity, funny enough, it actually does show up as a citation shows up really well there, uh, but does not show up as a brand mention. Okay. So there could be a lot of reasons for this. I won't get into it, but the point is, is like, this is another great example of like really good search performance does not correlate well to AI search performance. Okay. So got to kind of stop spreading that message. And I mean, you can spread the message all you want. I mean, I guess that's fine. It doesn't really affect me, but 
But if you're someone who's really trying to get the best results on these platforms, you cannot keep playing the same games. The reason why I can do well here is because I'm, I'm focused on the algorithm specific to traditional Google, which is a highly relevant page, a highly relevant domain, and lots of strong, good backlinks. That's basically it. I didn't need any reviews. I didn't need a social presence. I didn't need to be on a bunch of listicles. I didn't need any of that, honestly. It's not the same for the LLMs though. You, the LLMs are like soup, okay? That's how I like to describe it. It's like soup and it's bringing everything in and then it's synthesizing all of those signals and then determining what brand should show up. So in general, doing good marketing is probably the best thing that you can do going forward. Just be everywhere, right? Just be everywhere. Um, and that's going to basically just greatly increase your odds of success on ChatGPT and Perplexity and all these other platforms. Okay. But if you're just focused on your website, your first party website, you can do okay, but you're not going to do great. And so when I look at this and I've seen this across the board, there are not many brands that are killing it across every single one of these things. Is it possible? Absolutely. Every single one of these platforms can be optimized. So when we think about what is SEO now, I, I do believe search everywhere optimization and being able to optimize across multiple platforms, that's where the real value is. And the SEOs that are gonna survive in this current environment are gonna understand all of these platforms. Um, so hope that helps. Thanks for watching.